a springtime ring To have a friend right in your corner Your heart will feel a little warmer Tender, loving care Tender, loving care Each warm and friendly touch Let someone know you care so much Tender, loving care Tender, loving care Good afternoon. Welcome to another program of Tender, Loving Care. And today, you can tell we're in a different setting. This is Artistry on Main. This is an open house on the occasion of the first anniversary of Artistry on Main here on Main Street in Buchanan, West Virginia. And artists are tender, loving, care people. You can tell here as we have musicians behind us playing some old fashioned fiddle music. And uh, it's a great, great uh, feeling. Uh, grew up on this. I, uh, when I go on to a radio station, flipping through, I have to find uh, country uh, western music, uh, preferably uh, folk music like this, uh, or else I feel like I'm not listening to music. I'm not saying say anything against what the children listen to today, but this is the real stuff. The Artistry on Main has 20, 38 artists, and uh, we're going to go and meet some of them as we go around. Uh, we are uh, a nonprofit organization. Uh, we promote the arts, uh, but the different artists take turns running the store. And uh, they, we each take about a day a month, and that way there's no overhead as far as having an employee. And then the artists sell their arts according to the price they set. Uh, and it's very creative and wonderful, and uh, you'll see. Uh, as you know, uh, watching this program over the past 37 years, uh, there's a lot of uh, books, four books now, fifth one on the way, uh, that uh, my father and I and my sisters will also be having a book in the future, but uh, we're authors, but that's one form of creativity. There's a lot more ways to be creative, and you're gonna meet some of those. Take a look in, at the musicians here for a minute, and then we'll move on to another scene. Wonderful. Thank you all very much, ladies, and we'll go visit another artist. Thank you. I promised you'd meet different artists here to, at Artistry on Main on our open house at the one year anniversary of the Artistry on Main on Main Street. And here's uh, Ron Buckton. Hello. Ron, uh, you're one of the artists, uh, and you, we go way back to the Tri County Clinic, and, and you uh, helped help with the mill down yeah. in southern Upshur County. Uh, but what are you doing today here with uh, scroll sawing? Yeah, I use, uh, I've been doing scroll saw work and I like to call myself a scrollaholic. Okay. But uh, I've been doing this ever since I retired about uh, 15 years ago. And wow. basically a scroll saw is a saw that cuts this way, uh -huh. up and down. Like a sewing machine. It's kind of like a sewing machine, okay. all the same principle. And for each, uh, just about for each cut you make, you take a little tiny drill, you drill a hole, mm -hmm. then you put the blade for your scroll saw through that hole, and then tighten everything up, cut your design, take the blade out, <clears throat> and do it all over again. Wow. Now uh -huh. I'll go pull one off the wall okay, here. Okay, sure, sure. 
This will be the mill. This actually, this is good. I didn't. This is actually. I saw that in the background. <laughs> this is actually the mill from uh, down in Babcock State Park. Oh, okay, sure. And to give you an idea, each one of these little cuts right here, mm -hmm. <coughs> it took another hole and another blade change. And oh. there's about 1,500 to 2,000 cuts in this thing. Oh, my goodness gracious. So it'll give you an idea. And you have to see the whole thing in the beginning. That's right. Oh my goodness. See, that is an artist's eye. And then uh, there's different kinds of scrolling. What I've done here, uh, the lamps, this type of thing, it's all called fretwork. Uh -huh. And then like the fox up on top here, that's called intarsa. Say it again. Intarsa. Intarsa. Different it's colors Italian. of wood. And they're different kinds of wood. Uh, you make your pattern and then uh, decide what colors would you want to mm -hmm. use and you cut out your pattern and glue everything together put it on the backing board wow. the interesting thing if you look at this one is there's no stain or dye of any kind used in that is it's that all right? natural color again you you as an artist you saw the how the woods would go together then that's right wow yeah, that's what you wow. have to do uh-huh uh, now, and did you learn your trade from uh, another artist, or how did, or self-taught, or how did no, you? No, I'm just kind of self-taught. The story that right? is, wow. when I retired, I used to do a lot of uh, cabinetry type work mm -hmm. as a hobby, but I've got arthritis, and doing that <coughs> major work like that yeah. got to be a little hard on me. And one Christmas, my wife says, "Well, for Christmas, I either want to get you an edge planer for carpentry." Or a scroll saw, which do you want? Okay. And I says, well, let me try a scroll saw. I've never done that before. How about that? Yeah. So I got that, and I've been doing this ever since. Well, it's wonderful. And uh, so folks who want to buy, uh, come by Artistry on Main, 10 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock at night, uh, Monday through Saturday, Sunday uh, noon till 6 o'clock. Uh, only closed on Easter and Christmas. All other times were open. So. Uh, these are fantastic artists. Uh, Ron, thank you very much for showing off yours. Thank you, Greenbrier. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Here we are at the open house of Artistry on Main, and this is one of the main people, uh, a uh, dynamo for us, Christine Keller. Thank Christine. you, Greenbrier. Yeah, you're our president, Madam President. Thank you. And uh, we have had a successful year. Yes, we have. It's been an exciting year to be part of Artistry on Main. A lot of things have happened this past year. We're quite pleased with all the classes that we've had and the community participation in them and just how everybody's just looking forward to that next class and what they can learn. So I really feel that we're starting to really spread the arts and letting people get a taste of a lot of different medias without mm -hmm. investing a lot of money into it. They can decide what From they like here. to and you're, we're in the classroom right now. We are in the classroom, and right now we're working on barn quilts that are going to be our window display for July and August. Okay. And then the artists who painted them can take home their uh, barn quilts and hang them on the side of their buildings. Okay, it sounds wonderful. This is a design as you go through, I think, Pennsylvania Dutch country, I always think about this, but it could be West Virginia barns too. Right, well, a lot of them that are on West are. Pennsylvania Dutch tell a story about the person. Mm. Um, a lot of us just picked out designs that we like that, okay. and we're painting them the colors that we want right. just to make it our uh, own. A president would pick uh, royal purple, uh, <laughs> of course, right? And there's going to be more purple Well, you're wearing there. that, too. That's right. Purple, okay. purple's okay. my color. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you also, and you, you probably have some nice jewelry, you do. Mm -hmm. You make wonderful jewelry. I do. This is a piece of my jewelry. I've been doing, um, these are a new piece this past couple months that I've been selling quite a bit of. They're anodized aluminum. All my jewelry is very colorful because I'm all about color no matter what kind of jewelry I'm doing. Whether it's sterling, I'm using colorful stones, or the anodized where I'm using all the different colored wires, or even the copper where I'm putting patinas on it to get the color onto the metal. And I've started enameling this year, which is another way of adding color to the metal. So. Wow. Now, I follow you on Facebook. You, you always are posting some interesting new creation. Yes. And that's a good source. Is that under Facebook, Christine Keller? Or it's under Chris Art. Chris Art. Chris Art. Okay, yes. So if you're uh, interested in Facebook, uh, you can check out this very colorful and creative 
uh, jewelry. Yep, and it'll link back to where you can buy it and purchase it from. So. Okay, and, and our uh, shop is here, Artistry on Main, is open every day of the year except Easter and Christmas. And Christmas, yep. And it's 10 in the morning until 6 at night. Thanksgiving, okay. <laughs> yeah, stay home, eat turkey. <laughs> That's okay. right, stay home and enjoy your family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, we, the artists take turns running the shop. Uh, so if, if I'm there and uh, the new uh, computer doesn't work, uh, that's, that's, it's, it's the computer's fault, not mine. <laughs> no, it's me. I, but I, I catch on. But uh, artists uh, uh, probably are artists because we're not computer techs or something. Uh, <laughs> but we make it work. Yep. We make it work. It's been really good, and it's nice to always have a different artist in here. So if you ever come in, ask what their craft is, and they'll tell you what their booth is here and they'll just uh, tell you about their a little bit about their process and how they make things mm -hmm. so it's interesting way to meet the artists and it's also a great way to keep the shop open as much as we've done which has yeah. made the big difference in the success of it this past right. year now we also have uh, is it a Facebook uh, yes we ID? do so we could you can follow us there too mm -hmm. it's artistry on Maine there's actually two pages one is actually the gallery site the other is just like a personal page but we don't use that one much we use the actual gallery site which is okay. called artistry on Maine it will have a picture on it not just our logo so that way you know you're on the right site okay I've tried to delete the other one and I can't <laughs> okay <laughs> but this is a wonderful uh, year for us uh, this is our anniversary celebration and it's also right before Mother's Day and with the Strawberry Festival. So come on down, enjoy Artistry on Main. Yes, come on down and check us out. We'll be here for you. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Greenbrier. Okay. Here we are on Artistry on Main and we're out on Main Street. And the Tom Lynch is one of the founding board members, our current board member, and uh -huh. a artist of supreme skill with uh, chairs and, and I'm not sure what you're doing today Tom but you're making something creative. That's right I'm uh, turning on a wood lathe here um, and I'm going to be turning a, a baby rattle. It's a captive ring baby rattle. It's all made from one piece of wood. It's a Turner's trick. Um, I'll, you'll see as I'm turning here, I slice it into pieces and then undercut it. And, and I can recommend uh, having three little granddaughters, and they all have one of these, uh, that they're loved by children. They make noise. They uh, cause the child to learn rhythm. Uh, and of course, uh, they're a piece of art made from natural material that has a wax finish, uh, baby safe. So... Like an artist, you have to visualize what you're doing. In other words, I don't see the pattern. I begin to see a pattern now of... Right, here's the three rings. Uh-huh. And this will be... I'll show you this. Uh, on the end here, this will be the acorn over here. I'm just gonna okay, your your organization is known as Acorn um, Lucky Acorn. Lucky Acorn, and so there's an right. acorn in each piece. That's I found right. that out. Two acorns. Two acorns. Okay. And this one. To each end, huh? Yeah. So here's the acorn. You can see it kind of forming up there now. Now and. Uh, Several, several segments back, we met Christine Keller, and uh, she mentioned the classes. Uh, you right. have a class too, don't you? I um, I have a class in in wood turning, beginning wood turning, as well as uh, seat weaving. Hmm. Okay. Um, and my uh, my star student was a, a twelve year old who um, <laughs> who came by today and did some turning again. He, wow. He's very excited about turning. He wants to buy a lathe, and I think he's going to be able to. Oh, on wow. his way to being a really good turner. Isn't that great? Yeah. This is the way people learn, right? Apprenticeship. That's in a right. Way. And we learn by doing. That's right. Learn by doing. Yeah. Learn by, yeah. Well, I love to teach, so my classes are, um, are a lot of fun for me, but the students have a lot of fun too, and everyone yeah. goes home with, you know, something. Right. Now, over the years, uh, Tom has been uh, active in our community in many ways. Uh, he served on the board at Tri-County Health Clinic. I have known Tom through that. Community Care of West Virginia. Now Community yeah. Care of West Virginia. It's grown, 
Yeah, we're in seven counties now. Oh my goodness, isn't yeah. that something? Yeah. Wow, yeah. impressive. Yes, it is. And, and of course, we need more health care, and uh, we have insurance uh, now, but uh, you, you were known as uh, the place to go if you had no insurance. That's right. That's right. We're a federally qualified uh, health clinic, um, uh -huh. rural, rural health. Yeah. And your dad was a doctor. I think that's a My footnote. dad was a doctor, too. Okay. That's right. How my, about that? My two sisters are, are in health care also. Okay. Nurses. So. Wow. So. Well, I'd like to uh, look at some of your other works, if we can, so folks will know what is happening here at Artistry on Main. And you can come by uh, every day of the year except Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter and 10 in the morning till 6 at night throughout the week and then noon till 6 on Sunday. Let's go see some chairs and things. Sounds good. Okay. Here we are with Tom Lynch again. We've come inside off of Main Street and uh, we're standing around his exhibit which is extensive and wonderful and uh, very creative. And Why don't you show us a little bit about what you do with wood? Sure, thank you. Um, well, I get all my wood locally. Um, I um, try to go to sawmills and find a log and have the log sawn up into, into boards. Uh, and then I air dry it um, three to four years often and then, uh, and then use the air dried lumber. Um, and I do a style similar to what I learned uh, how to make at the Linger Chair Factory um, back in the 70s and 80s. A ladder back, ladder back chair, steam bent, uh, hand turned post. Um, uh, green, uh, green wood joinery is what I use. The posts are green, the, the rungs are dry, and the sh chair shrinks up on itself as it, as it dries. It's a very old chair making technique. And joinery um, means it's, you're fastening it together, but not with screws. No screws. I use glue, but um, no mm -hmm. screws. Wow. It's a traditional technique of, of a shrink and using the shrinkage of the wood to make the chair stronger. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I use that also in my, my rustic uh, style furniture. Um, this is made out of uh, American hornbeam, also called ironwood or okay. blue beech or water beech, um, muscle wood, okay. uh, uh, or American hornbeam. Hornbeam. Yeah, so it's very, very hard wood. Um, it's not used for anything. Uh, used to make mallets out of it, it was so hard and so strong. Okay. It makes a great chair. I enjoy using it because it has a lot of character. Mm -hmm. Um, now, locust is a uh, hard wood. Locust is hard, yes. And how about fence posts then? I mean, horn, American horn. Horn bean does not, it rots bean. very easily. Oh, it rots within go. two okay. seasons. And so this is, it's found a perfect match here with Yeah, chairs. indoor use, not indoor outdoor use. use. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, well good. Yeah, so the seats are all made from hickory bark. I harvest it myself in the spring. Mm. Um, and I save it till I'm ready to use it and then boil it and, until it's flexible and, and uh, uh -huh. I split it by hand. and and then weave it in the, the seats. This is the traditional Appalachian chair seat and a, and a split bottom chair, hickory mm. bark. And Tom, you've mentioned that there is a class where folks can learn to do weaving? Yes, they can learn this. The hick, um, I have taught the hickory bark, but mostly in the class we do a shaker tape, which is, um, it's this cotton webbing material. Ah, okay. It's um, very durable, comes in nice colors. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, and most of the students prefer this. It's much easier on the hands. Blue and white. Uh, here's the yeah. uh, Buck Cannon Upshire colors. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, and it's a cushion seat. It has a foam foam cushion. Mm -hmm. Very comfortable. It's it, and uh, very nice. So yeah, the student. We have a class once a month on the second Saturday of the month, um, excluding May. So June June is going to be our next class, second okay. Saturday of June. You can come sign up here at the gallery. Yes, and um, just come by and uh, we have a book. It doesn't matter uh, that Tom's here or not. Artists take turns running the shop, right. but you can sign up under your name for That's the next right. class. That's right. Or they can call me um, okay. to find out more information about the class. My phone number is 304-642-5908. Uh, Okay, 304-642-5908. Okay. Very good. What else do you have? Uh, so many things here. I, yeah. there's the, these are the rattles that we were looking at already made and That's already right. boxed, boxed ready up. to go. Right. So here's the rattle for the big baby. Oh boy. <laughs> we all have a big baby in our family. We know we're talking about Father's Day. <laughs> yeah, Father's Day is June coming up. That's right. So um, uh, actually, I often tell people this is Paul Bunyan's 
baby rattle. It was, okay. it was dug up on top of Cheap Mountain <laughs> back in 1902. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I just started making these uh, little candle holders. Hmm. Um, hmm. Just this is rhododendron that I've cut oh, and okay. uh, kind of now, scraped the bark off. My uh, mother was big into Advent at, at the Christian season of leading up to Christmas. And yeah. And we would have Advent candles in wood. So this would be a more fancy form for that, be. maybe. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. but many uses. Yeah. Look mm -hmm. at that. And uh, I have a lot of scraps from uh, the chair making. So I, I make these spatulas that are actually the cutouts. It's the, you can see oh, yeah, by the, the other part. part. Yeah, it's a the scrap piece that I cut out from a, from a slat. Mm -hmm. um, and it's already got a nice curve in it. It's, it's a, uh -huh. And so it makes a nice little spatula. Yeah, now I, I was making uh, pancakes the other Saturday. Is, is that it's suitable? Perfect. For, I, perfect I make, for that? yes. Okay. Perfect pancake flipper. Hey, that's good. And then we have the maple syrup here too. Oh, so uh, yes, good. that's right. <laughs> um, oh, and I developed my own, um, my own wood finish. Okay. And this finish is what I use on the spatulas and also on my, my rolling pins. Mm -hmm. So. So these are my rolling pins. Okay. You can feel that finish on there, how nice that is. Oh yeah, it's wonderful. This is, this is my new finish, it's called Cocoa Buzz. It's made from coconut oil and beeswax. How about that? So it, not only is it nice on, on uh, utensils, on countertops or spatulas, rolling pins, uh -huh. but it's great on, uh, on your cuticles. If you have cuticles that are, that are kind of torn up and just, oh, just pack it right in that. there. You try, try some. Homemade medicine here. Yeah, it's a homemade medicine. Okay. You no, know, beeswax is very, is yeah. very beneficial. It's uh, right. bacteriological, and, and See, so, so is the coconut I'm oil. I'm gardening without gloves, and so I need it. This, this is the stuff year. right here. Hey, yeah. This is great. Okay. Hey, well, Tom, thank yeah. you very, very much for showing us around. You're very welcome. And thank you for uh, being on the board and uh, keeping us running. All right. You're welcome. Okay. Great. <clears throat> I promised you when we began our program, you'd meet a lot of creative people and uh, people that make artistry on Maine work. And this is our open house. This is our first year as a new organization uh, taking over from the gallery, which also was in this space. And Teresa Mason is with us now, a very key important person to us, uh, helping with our classes, uh, helping with the organization itself and keeping us going. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. We, uh, we've had a, a lot of learning experiences this first year as far as classes, uh, trying to figure out what people want, uh, what kind of classes they want to take. Uh, we've had a lot of success with uh, short painting classes, uh, starving artist classes. Uh, now our variety has increased to the point that we sold out a soap making class in two days before we could even advertise it. Wow. That was wonderful. Really? That's tremendous. Uh, we we're offering another one in July. The one that sold out was in June. Mm -hmm. uh, now I understand uh, the soap has all organic ingredients. All organic. I uh, mean, you, don't, you can you eat it if you want to, but don't eat it, right? But, <laughs> right. But Some okay. of it has lye in it. I don't know if you can eat lye well, or not. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you would really feel clean. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, we have a basket making class coming up in a week. Um, digital photography is coming uh, in June. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to that. A lot of people want to take digital photography. Uh, stained glass has been a mainstay for oh, the gallery. And this um, is tremendous. I, we have, yeah. I, my wife and I have loved, we haven't taken the class, but we love the stained glass. And oh. Sam Adams is tremendous. She is tremendous. Um, she has been teaching both beginning and intermediate classes uh, since the gallery opened. Um, and partly because of her classes, we now are offering something new. Just decided yesterday, we're going to have something called Open Door or Open Back Door Studio. Mm. Um, that will be on our schedule, and anyone can come in and work on their stained glass using the glass grinders and the equipment. Uh, or they can come in, if I want to come in and work on a watercolor painting, mm -hmm. and you want to come in and work on something, okay. it's from 6 to 9 on different evenings. Uh, so, not when a class is going on, but to use the space. Just to use the space wow. and to come in, and for people in stained glass to mm -hmm. have time to yeah. finish panels. Uh, now, there's a, there's a story about Bill Gates, and I'll, I'll talk about, <laughs> you said starving artists. We don't want to, we're not all starving here, but, but, <laughs> but Bill Gates, you know, is the richest man in the world. 
uh, when he was a little boy, this is the, I'll give you the one minute version of this, uh, he uh, was interested in computers such as they were. It hey. really wasn't, yeah, the big computers <laughs> and, and the University of Washington in Seattle had a big computer and the professor got, had this little boy come in and say, I want to work on your computers. And, and the professor said, well, you know, hmm, little boy, you can come in at if 2 no, no one else is using it. <laughs> yes, at 2 a.m. So Bill Gates would get out of bed at night, not tell his parents what he's doing, crawl out the window, go down the hill to the university, go in with permission and work on computers till about six in the morning, and then uh, rush home, and get back in bed. His mother would wake, <laughs> knock on the door and say, time to wake up. <laughs> Bill Gates would get up and go to school, and the rest is history. Oh. <laughs> that is a good story. It's all about scheduling. <laughs> yeah. So our, our doors are open at 2 in the morning. <laughs> but whenever they are open, you can come yeah. and take a, do something like that, right? Well, uh, yes, 6 to 9 right now for the back door okay, open okay. studio. Now, Tom but, Lynch was interviewed a little bit earlier. He, t he said his star student was a 12-year-old. Oh, he's, yeah. And, and, and we've had 9-year-olds in the starving artist that classes right? that have done great? really See, well. That's yeah. the way to do it. We're working on uh, some classes for children this summer, uh, trying to get the funding together, um, and different things, uh, mm -hmm. painting, and I think uh, Wendy Clark of Windweave is thinking oh. about doing something with children, okay. dyeing some yarn. And, and we're going to try to do another so. author's class, uh, the, uh, the book series, uh, Stories of a West Virginia Doctor, is doing well. Uh, another one's coming out in a couple um, months uh, in June and but we'd like to do an author's class sometime this summer so keep stay tuned we'll of course advertise it on TV <laughs> and and they'll be here how do people know about these they just come into the shop um, and, and check the bulletin board you can check you can check the board which is here all the time um, and updated or you can go to our Facebook page okay uh, and check the click on the calendar and that is updated and then another way if you're Christine, not Facebook Cr Christine savvy, Keller said that Facebook has two addresses so you check at both Main of them. Street Main Street Studi Main Street uh, or Artistry on Main okay uh, and if you don't want to be you're not on Facebook uh, you can sign up here with your email or your phone and I will call and let you know or I will mail you the updated schedule okay so, no excuses. No excuses. No excuses. Now, uh, while Christine's uh, talking about uh, the window display, we'd like to focus a little bit on it. It's going to be hard to see, but it's very involved. We have creative windows, and Christine, you've been responsible. Teresa. Teresa, Teresa you've been responsible for some of these. And, up till uh, now. Up yeah. till now. And uh, I've loved um, the, the big flowers uh, the big, was big, our first yes, one. Yeah. The kind of. Uh, yeah, with the paint giant, spilled every place. Giant flowers, and then the buckets with the buckets paint, paint spilled. Yeah. Everyone liked that one. That was great. Uh, Van Gogh, Gogh Snowman. Van Gogh. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then uh, the kites. The Not kites. my favorite. I didn't like the kites as well. But uh, we're moving on, and uh, we're yes. creating the Creative next words. window in the background, in the back room right now. 72, I think Ron said, 72 different words he created with the scroll saw. And we, we talked with Ron about the scroll saw oh. and uh, fabulous. And, uh, and I had the hula see. hoops. I had them in my car. Ooh. We're standing here talking and he said, I said, how's the window going? He said, oh, I've just about got it done. He said, but what I need are hula hoops. And I said, I have 12 <laughs> in my car. And he looked at me like, what? But I did. I, I oh, had my. them in for a school project. And well, how so, about that? We were, we were with our granddaughter, who's uh, now three years old, and uh, we went to her future school, and uh, they had a, a school fair, and they had hula hoops just laying around on the playground uh -huh. for people to get up and hula hoop. Yeah. So we did, <laughs> yeah. and she, she's good at it. Oh, yeah, yeah well, I think it's a wonderful window. I love how it has movement and, uh, and really so works. Folks so folks need to come by during the Strawberry Festival and check, it check out. out the window. Yeah. It'll be here actually for a month or so. It'll be here until the beginning of July. The, the two window. months, okay. So, so the windows are worth coming around. Coming to look, yeah. And, and of course, come inside, and there's 38 different artists having their wares and uh, very creative people. And I'll say Teresa. Yeah, thank <laughs> Teresa. you. Yeah, thank you for taking your time to be here for the open house and helping us. Oh, I appreciate helping it. All of us starving yeah. artists. <laughs> <laughs> all thank right. you. Thank you. 
Stories of a West Virginia Doctor, written by Dr. Harold D. Allman. A collection of 55 short stories about his experience as a small town doctor in central West Virginia. And Tender Loving Care, Stories from a West Virginia Doctor, Volume 2, written by Dr. Greenbrier Allman, using videotapes to write 70 additional stories of his father's very colorful life as a small town doctor. They can be found for purchase at Amazon.com and most local bookstores. Tune into Channel 3 Buckhannon for Tender Loving Care with Dr. Greenbrier Allman, where he talks about the connection between Christianity and medicine.